but they're uh, filtering through the sediment Hemicordate for feeding. acorn worm. Yeah. Why don't they take a direct route to where they're going? Because they're eating, bro. Can you More like hemicorn. All you can eat buffet. Oh. <laughs> That's what's making those tracks, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, there is biology there. Yeah. Look at this biology. Nobody likes the hemicorn date. Fine. Maybe a black coral, bathypathies, yeah. or alternate apathies. Yep. Yeah. Nobody. Smart. Yeah. All right, come wide, please. Did you want to look at the hemicordate? Yeah, let's look at the A chord. Ground fold of 20 on phase A at Atlanta. Great. Yeah, 20 meg is good. Okay. That's yep, a nice 20 meg. showing the source of those things with the critter doing its business. You can uh, zoom in on the business, please. <laughs> Are those the ones that like bury themselves in mounds? Wow. Yeah, they one? have like U-shaped burrows in the yeah. ground sometimes, or in the in the sediment. Are they different than peanut worms? Well, that's a good question. Oh. I don't know. Maybe those are a different kind of hemicordate. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dave. Great, thank you. That's the first time I've seen those. I've only seen the tracks. Oh, that's great. Talk about squishy looking. Can you remind me of the bearing of our last move? Two six something? Thank you. I just looked it up. Peanut worms are actual annelid worms. So those are Can you true come worms. Up on delta? Hmm? Can you please come up on delta? Oh. And the acorn worm wasn't a true worm. Where's my delta? Right, yeah, that's There's a hemichordate. Oh, I do need to come so up on So they're delta. most closely related to like echinoderms, to sea stars and stuff, and to, and to chordates, uh, things with backbones. Or close, close things close to things with backbones. <laughs> Another little wormy over here. Why is it not seeing anything? Not seeking much, yeah. Why is it not seeing anything? 20 meters? Nope. It's just probably DB'd wrong. Delta's around 18. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to poke at this sonar. Gauge check finished. Roger, all good. Hmm. What's up? I can't see nothing. I want to be able to see things in this owner. There's, we got some little red Yeah, lipidies. this is weird. Who's done stuff? Fire, what are we doing? What about default? We love Why default. We? I like default. Ooh. Gain. Do more. More. Okay. What's this? Direction. I don't understand. Well, the meso looks great. Totally, yeah. Why is the... Hmm. Let's just crank this right up, see what happens. Nice and loud. That's worse. It's better. Oh, okay. Ooh. Nine's as low as it gets. Zero. This is not the settings I recognize, but okay. And this is the wrong. What What do we normally do? One, maybe? No. That looks nice. Pretty colors. It's not very good. Yeah. Know, you can't, okay. There's biology right there. We can't tell her. It's a black dot. 
Yeah, okay. Not sure if it's bio or not, if you get a chance to zoom. Yeah, we can make that happen. Uh, how do I drive this thing? Okay, Dave, uh, you can zoom if you keep it in frame, and I'll keep approaching it. That's a critter. Ugh. Yeah, well, there was like two of them in a very suspicious lined up order. Ah. Still remembering how to do this, Dave, sorry. No worries. All right, you can come wide, please. So, mm -hmm. science. I don't, yeah, keep that going up. I don't know what that is. Do you want to just keep uh, us to keep putting moves in until you yep, say otherwise? Going. Okay, let's do another move, please. Yeah, this is just a bit of a recon up the slope. 30 meters is fine, yeah. We can we might speed that up later, but 30 for now is fine. Three zero. So when we first got to the floor, you immediately started looking for a rock. Is there yep. like uh, waypoints that you have, or points that you have, or levels that you have that you need to collect rocks from? Not, not necessarily, not specifically, but I just think it's good luck to get a rock just in case something happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get a sample as early as you can. But this slope is not very encouraging. It looks like it's a lot of talus. It's been welded together and covered with sediment, so. So if all that sediment, like, blew away, it would just be, like, all rock? Yeah, it, it looked like those rocks, but just no sediment. If you ever been on, you know, mm. below a cliff on land or something like that, you see all the pile of Let's rocks do, at the bottom. Uh, That's what shrimp. this would look like. Ooh, shrimp. Hmm. Shrimp number one. I gotta log it in. Doing a shrimp count. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I want to be closer. Be stretched out. Eww. a short tether versus the ONC one. So we my yeah okay. Ooh. Tilt's uh, pretty out front, yeah. Let's do. Let's keep it at 20 meters. All right. Delta. That's a good number, actually, right now. Good number. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that looks happy right there. The Sea King looks pretty happy too. Yeah, it's happier than it was. It's still pretty ugly. I don't know. We'll see what happens when we get up to some proper. Uh, I don't know. Proper. Clips. Cliffs. Cliffs. Here's an All interesting right. question. Um, besides, like, junk, what has the Nautilus found that's, like, archaeological artifacts? Does anyone know? Other than the shipwrecks and such we've explored previously. You're asking for like items besides wrecks or besides so besides plane or shipwrecks. Yeah. Oh, I wonder, Trevor, do you have an answer for that? I can't. I don't know that we found isolated stuff besides like trash, but have we found really cool archaeological isolated items? I don't think so. There's a lot of archaeology that the ship and operation did before I started with them. That's true. In the Mediterranean, I'm sure they found a ton. Yeah. Oh yeah, because I remember at the Inner Space Center they had the um. Um, for the jars, yeah. Yeah. But since then, not in my time. Yeah, a change in, a pivot in priorities, let's say. All right. Uh, I mean, we're in a pretty remote area. It would have had to have traveled real far, fell off a ship somewhere. So I think that we're going to want to keep moving. So can you let me know before the ship stops and just see if we want to keep putting another move in, keep the momentum going? 
So I think right now I would like to have another ship move, same distance, same bearing. Thank you. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, the occasional rock and biology opportunistic. We could do it. We could do a line of point two. Yeah, that's fine. Hey, science row. Roger that. We're going to. I don't know if you copied all that. Yeah, I did. Get track a line of point two yep, knots. Sounds good. Sounds good. We'll keep the, get the pace going a little bit here. ground running. <laughs> Instruments to place. Hit the ground swimming. On the vent. <laughs> All right, as we wait on the ship, With all those um, acorn worms down there, does that mean there's a lot of like yummy goodies in the sediment? Shrimp. Is that a shrimp? Shrimp too. It is a shrimp, yeah. Um, yummy goodies. I mean, we're pretty deep down, and uh, those goodies have to rain pretty far to get here, and lots That's of good. other people are eating the goodies on their way down. So there's kind of like the leave-ins and squeeze-ins left, oh. and... Uh, and they just filter through everything and keep whatever they can, and then the rest <laughs> is deposited in that long trail we see everywhere. But yeah, they're, they're getting something out of it. The shrimp is really into our new gear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, camera inspection complete. <laughs> it poked it and said, nope. Or biology there. They started to move at all? I don't think so yet, eh? Okay. Something's weird happening with the current sensor. Are you feeling any current, Trevor? Mm, no, not really. Okay. Next to none. Yep. I'm just noticing the sensor readout on the bridge is uh, it's doing a 180. We got another one of those dot things. You can haul in on Delta, please. 
What I'm looking for there, what's deciding on the hauling it on Delta, is when the tether gets nice and close to the camera. We can have it get close, but having it hit the vehicle means it has a potential uh, tangle hazard. So I want to keep the vehicle separated enough that we can avoid that. Sounds good. Yeah. Get a quick zoom on that one of those again. Yes, we can. I thought it was a you kind of derm at first, but it may not be. I'm going like to third one. Try to do a better job here of zooming in on it. All right, Delta back to 20. Thank you. Bouncing around quite a bit. Yeah, that's all right. Okay, we can zoom in there, please. I think that's an echidna derm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Boring one. Okay, All right, thank, so you. thank you. Come wide. You said it's like a sea urchin? Yeah, it did look squishy. Rocks. <gasps> a little bigger rocks. Would they would they be boulders? Or rocks. This is the part where you give us the breakdown about grain sizes. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, is this is our first uh, bio thing. Bio thing. Nope. But it's definitely a, a bio thing. Yeah. Okay. Let's have some zoomage, please, Dave. Is it a Bamboo. Be the same color as the background, fine. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> yeah. It looks bamboo-y. Look like it's bamboo-y. It's gotta it be. It looks like almost chrysogorgid polyps, though. Like, not bamboo-y oh, polyps. Okay. Um, but do we see any bamboo stock lines? I don't really slight, see though. the lines. No. Those almost just look like the bases of the polyps, but yeah, not really like lines. Saying. Yeah. Okay, that might be wide, a please. There was a weird chrysogorgid. Yeah, I gotta move, unfortunately. There's another one. There's another oh, there's one. There's another something, yeah. What's this thing off to the right? I got time for a quick look there. Maybe an old sponge or something? Can we have a quicker zoom on this guy, please? It's a Halterian. Oh, oh, yeah, nice. Good spot. Right. Come wide, please. I gotta come on the rocks and stuff. Gotta get out of here. Would those corals be squishy, or would they feel hard, or medium? Uh, you're talking about the ones that we zoomed in before yeah. the halterian. Mm -hmm. They um, uh, like the 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 polyps feel fleshy, squishy, but the center skeleton uh, is is like hard, brittle. Yeah. Although they don't have like calcium carbonate skeletons the same way that reef forming corals do. Semi-squishy. Another acorn off the left. Yeah? It's worm town here. Like little artists, they make little drawings in the sand. One looked like an airplane.
Professional deep sea finger painters. New common name. <laughs> Put them in a big etch a sketch thing. That'd be perfect. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Yes, I mean they kind of are. <laughs> this is what we are in the etch a sketch. <laughs> what is this big thing over here? Is that a sponge? It looks fun, anyway. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, can you zoom in on this, please? Well, this is weird. <laughs> Looks like a tunicate, maybe? I yeah, don't know. It's a really yeah, big right. tunicate. It's a strange one, though, for sure. Does that have an associates in there? Yeah, the uh, sponge moves from. It doesn't. It's not a sponge. I'm, I'm leaning to tunicate. What's that in the middle of it? Great questions. <laughs> All right, that's the end of that. Thank you, come on. <laughs> that was great. Um, tunicates have like pharynx. They have they have more internal body structures than you might think, because uh, they're chordates, so they're some of the closely related invertebrates to humans, to things with backbones. Um, they even in their larval stage have. Uh, a, a notochord or something that's kind of like a uh, an early version of a backbone. Really? Yeah. And then they, many of them lose things like postanal tail. They don't have that in their adult stage, but they do have it earlier on. Cool. Yeah. More of those little echinoderms. The boring ones? There. Isn't that what you called them? None of them are boring. They're trying their best. Keeping the delta depth uh, steady at 20. Yeah, and feel free to move that winch box around as you need, so you don't get the leaned over shoulder uh. cramp. <laughs> it is on the little floor mat so it can slide. Okay. Uh, just to confirm, when you did the gauge check for tension, did you reset the max? I did not. I'm okay, gonna go ahead and now. do that. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, it's all good. Cool. And then when you're finished, please leave it, try to remember to leave it selected on there so we can use the uh, controller. Yeah. Ooh, you want to see something there? You can have a look. Okay, I believe I've sorted that out. Yeah. This time so for sure. That's not normal though, is it? We don't have... Oh, okay. Neat. Can you zoom in on this, please? I didn't know that, Randy. Thank you. That's essentially what they used to do, but I guess that wasn't passed on to him. Roger. Okay. Oof. All right, that's enough of that. I'm sorry. Bouncy here. You can come wide. So I'm going to use the excuse of the cameras being on the porch it means I can't tip the camera down for me being bouncy. Just gonna just gonna use that because why not? Jonathan might be asleep, so maybe I can blame him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you want a nice low down camera angle, I've got a lovely one here. Did you that end up on our KVM anywhere? Uh, it should be the uh, blank button kind of in the middle. 
I'm gonna take a look, just for fun. I think Dave also had it on the video system. Ooh, look at that, that's Ooh. the cinema cam. Cinema cam, center, stereo is up in the corner. I can irresponsibly look at it here instead of all my important system health stuff. No, this is much more important. I can put it up in the multi-viewer. Can you? That'd be yeah. cool. Could you take over the deck view, please? And I can I maybe try lining it up on stuff. Or even there, sure, yeah. That's I don't know what happened down there. But, uh, um, I don't know either. Uh, this is a, a salvo from a previous dive. Uh, okay. Uh, I would like wire cam there. Yeah. Okay. Um, no wire cam. It's fine. We're only backing down on the wire. It's fine. It's okay. Let's do <laughs> Yeah, um, oh, I appreciate the effort, Dave. Um, oh, no, I can do it manually. It'll just have to, we'll have to put it back each time we uh, do right. a sample yeah, or something. Right. But I can do it. I can fix this. Hold on. We did set up something where the fourth salvo is the, like, the crew-specific one. Is that true? I think that was... Um, I don't. Okay. I didn't have much passover on what uh, got a bunch of stuff got done. Uh, the the one that I just used worked fine two legs ago when we were out using this stuff when Dan was okay. out here. Cool. Uh, it's called yeah. the, it's called dive cormony as a matter of fact. Nice. Uh, but I don't know what Ed might have done last time around. Yeah, I mean it was pretty close to greatness. Uh, except for no wire cam. Other than that, that would seem like a fine thing to do. Okay, well, uh, let me uh, play around with this. I don't know if that salvo is on our router panel. It's muck. We got another question in the chat. Is the ship disturbance on or near the seafloor? So maybe they're asking, is, um, the exploration we're doing disturbing the seafloor at all? Minimally. Except for when, when I ran into stuff, I guess. <laughs> cool, thank you. Yay! Probably just a bunch of shrimps going, what did I just see? Yeah. yeah. We're mostly just observing and, and out of practicality. We don't really want to touch down on the seafloor too often because sometimes the sediment can get into our view and we don't we can't see as well. But Let's obviously see. when we do collect samples and things like that, um, there is some disturbance. But as you can see from the piloting right now, we're not we're not generally uh, stirring things up or Got disturbing. Got a fish or seafloor. something, I think. Yeah, we can definitely look at this. This but, is it a tripod fish? It could be. There's no way to know. No. Might as well not even look at it. No. <laughs> oh, critter. Okay, Dave, you can zoom in on this guy's. Oh. It's a fish. Oh. 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 Like Thank you. Got zapped with the lasers. Yeah. Just kidding. To clarify, the lasers do not zap. No. <laughs> <laughs> zap lasers. I was saying, just kidding. What do you think about this rock? If you want, if you have time, just oh, grab it. Do I? <laughs> rock time. It's a big one. Was that a question? The one up to the left. Do I want to? This one, yeah, do you want the big one? Or do you want the one up to the left? I got the one on the left. Sounds good. Uh, how do you feel about timing? Oh, I think we continue, right? I think we continue, yeah. Whoa, Jonathan Cam is low in my mind right now. Yeah, it's pretty low and low and incredible. Yeah. Another shrimp. Shrimp count. Is that three? That is three shrimp so far. Sure. Three shrimp. That's probably close to correct. Okay, so what he's doing here is he's... Can I get the craft camera, please? Craft camera? Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Uh. And it will live there another day. 
Yeah, I think they're pretty well cemented underneath. Yeah, I'd say. Move it along. So when you can't grab a rock, do you like feel tension on those joysticks at all, or is it? Good question. Uh, no, just the fact that it doesn't move um, is my only indicator. When we eventually get a rock that does move, you'll see how uh, how it looks very different. We'll look at this fish in the meantime. Yeah, I think it's the same one. It's got like the end. It's the back antenna. to more. Dave, you can zoom at your leisure. Just keep it in frame. Said you didn't get my good side before. No, this is a different one. That's this different is cusky. One, yeah. yeah, it does look like a cusky. Yeah, it doesn't have those tripod things. No. That one's just chilling. Ooh. Oh, look at a little yeah. whisker down the front. Nice job. Ooh, oh, where are you going? beautiful. Look at his head. Face. Uh, oh, he's not he's happy. shy. <laughs> Thank you. I wonder why in front of these bright lights he's never seen before. <laughs> it has never seen before. Get that in the cinema cam for you there, Tim. Oh, that's gorgeous. Cool. <laughs> I'm going to turn on the down light, see if that works better for the cinema cam. Just for fun. So that was oh, a it does. eel? Does it yep. ever. Look at that. Bye-bye. Okay. So what's the cinema cam going to be used for? That's a great question. Tim, are you on comms? Hey, for a minute. Do you want to talk through what the cinema cam is going to be used for? Yeah, so there's, I guess, three cameras in this array. Um, the center cinema cam is high resolution uh, still and video camera, um, kind of targeted at getting the things that the main Herc uh, Zeus camera can't do as well. Uh, the Herc Zeus has very nice zoom lens, gets really nice close-ups. Um, the cinema cam is more focused on kind of wide angle, high resolution type things. That's great, thank you. They look like rocks, yeah. They look like rocks, but do they feel like rocks? There's no way to know. That's only one way. May I learn if these are indeed rocks? <laughs> you okay with them sampling any of these ones? Yeah, if, if you you know, give it a try. Just keep, you know, like I said, poke them with a stick. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I see one. Looks great. Which one's that? That's, I don't know that one. That's going out of frame at the bottom left. Oh, it's too oh. late. It's too late now. Got yeah, it. Yeah, fall behind you, left behind. Go ahead. Further afield. You see any you like back there? Anything right now. I mean, anything that moves. Anything. Anything that doesn't move. Oh, Although we can't leave basket behind. Basket looking thing down there? Yeah, that thing in the bottom. Uh, is, it, is there one over Left. here too? Oh yeah, I couldn't Ooh. check that. I was gonna do one center frame. Yeah. Dave. Dave. Merci beaucoup. Sorry. It's okay. I had a request to put the cinema cam up where people could see it. <laughs> I think that one's stuck. Dave is just one man. With many cameras. A man of many cameras. Come on, you They're so devil. deceiving. Don't they look like they just want to come up? I was going to just, I was just going to uh. say that. It looks like they all yeah. just like get flicked away. Mm-hmm. I'm opportun opportunistically? Nope. Yeah. I'm Tim, optimistically keeping the... Tim, I hope you were ready for prime time. I put... Uh, so you can see what that point two is doing, there. right? It seems slow at times, but it's going to seem very quick if we try to stop and do something. So it's, it's, it's an exploration mode for a reason. We have a little bit of opportunity for things, but still keeping pace along our track. Yep. That's what we want to keep doing here. Yeah. I know. Mm. These are old rocks. How do you know they're old? Well, because they're all stuck together, but 
the rocks that are dated in this area are like eight. Ooh. Ooh. You, you want it? it? Yes, let's do it. All right. Yeah. Some weather. Not ideal in coloration, but oh, <laughs> yeah. it's a squishy. Yeah. It, it let us pick can it I up. Can I zoom in, please? I mean, if nothing else, you can use this a, so a yeah, training take one. Mm -hmm. Should it get, not be that color? Well, you don't really want it. You want it to be pr preferably all black, but that means there's a lot of alteration on it. Thank you for the beautiful rotation, pilot. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Like a ballerina. Perfect. All right, and now come I usually please. tell them where to put it because they're going to so start wanting to do okay. that. Yeah, ask so once we stow it, um, uh, but you can so you can just training, double click so right there. Just a moment. Want, description. Right I'm going to ask you to go to the Kirk Hydraulics page. Well, you know, there you go. Flat. Right click. Just adjusting the delta depth. On yeah, great. Properties. On the other. And then they'll give you a sample number, which is going to be, spoiler alert, NA153 underscore. Okie doke. Uh, okay, hydraulics. hydraulics page, and there's a sample tray out. Stand by on that, but in moments, I'm going to ask for that to happen. Uh, dash, not underscore. Okay, stand by. Dash. Oh, yeah, there you go. Zero, zero, one. Altered on, the, altered on the other side? Yeah, on the other side. Okay, sample tray. And then please, you can press I like to note the oh, depth the that we did it. So, oh, 255, because it's the depth plus the altitude. And you can stop Close there. enough to um, so yeah, two, three, five, so five. Trying to estimate the size a little bit, but and then in just, the notes you just, just put rock. Science that's in sample uh, bucket echo. So they brought it around echo. to the side and they put it in the starboard box and they put it in E. The reason why we're doing this all quick is because we wanted it. to so not I would stop just the ship. Zero, zero, you go one. all the way. All the way. Because we know what's going to be for this dive, boys. Yeah, rock. And then fine. like flat rock. Yeah. Underneath it. Um. They're taking all the notes about and everything, er, which good? which box it went in and all that Great. stuff. You can and give it a little bit more. I in. would now okay. since we started ready. And then you can go. The um, yeah. Oh, there we go. Sometimes that, that yeah, that gets stuck, and, and you just have you. to switch over to this one. Yay! Um, then yep. you can right, select your target again that you're headed to, right or you don't have to. You can just keep an idea of it. What was it? All right. Okay, I can breathe again. All right. Cool. Good, good job not okay. stopping the ship. And yep. Nav, could we drop a pin for that? They did, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Trevor. Now we can go full bio exploration mode. Bio That's okay. You can right-click and erase. But keep in mind, every time you do right-click erase, it's not actually deleting it. So. There's another one. And another one up there. Can I have uh, a so zoom you don't have to do there, that. Please. That's all automatically. All metadata is automatic, so you don't any temperature, any of that. You don't have to write in. Okay. Um, so at this point, you would hit submit on that. It preserved the moment that you opened that window, so that's good. Um, as close to the time that we like secured the Ooh. sample is good to to submit that. And then you want to kind of guesstimate, like, all right, when did we finish that? Same. It was around 0744. That's a nice look at it. Um, right. Yep. Thank and you. then just write down again here where on her it ended up. Oh. Hey, Looks Tim, like are you on comms? On comms. A little up there. Hey, uh, what's the story with the cinema cam? It is not moving. I'm about to close it and reopen it, see if it's nice. Roger that. Nice okay. What's this yep. little floaty thing? So that should be everything. So that's simple. Cool. So it's always kind of a dance, like depending on how fast they go, so either asking them to slow down or prioritizing uh, like that first and then writing this shrimp after because you can write that whenever you want. Um, it's more important that that be entered around the right time. So, um, yeah. But yeah, now you can see, like if you were to click on the sample uh, down the can entry, I front porch like view, please? It, that's all the stuff that it preserved the oxygen concentration lab on you depth, porch. all the CTD data. And this, but this came from, okay, so this came from It's the from pen. Kirk. It's all, uh, no, it came from when you opened that window. Okay, so which is why it's important. Long for the pin is saved in In their system, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, so, but that is all just the data for whenever you open that window, which is why it's important to have it be as close to the actual sample 
location as possible. There are times when we're like, we're getting yanked on, we're gonna grab the rock real quick and then fly away, and you don't wanna enter that until we've secured it. Mm -hmm. um, so at that point we have probably drifted from where it was initially taken, and it's gonna be a little bit off, but that's okay. We're probably not gonna get that far. It's more important, it's more annoying to have to go back and delete samples, but... Um, yeah. Also, it jinxes it, it too, secure. Leela. Yeah. <laughs> it's a huge jinx. It jinxes it. If you take a sample number before it's in the box, you're definitely not going to get it. Yeah. Right, There's no way. Yeah. A lot of these uh, acorn worms. Yeah. It's the most concentration I've ever seen of them in one spot. Usually you just see like one or two of them. I mean, last year we were in the same area and I didn't see any of them, just saw the tracks. Oak? What was that, Rob? I mean, I saw, I mean, last year when we were in this area, I didn't see any. Yeah, I, I've only ever seen like one at a time and then nothing around. So it's it's odd that there's so many. And they're, yep. you can see their patterns too. So they've clearly been Zoom here. Zoom in please, Dave, on this urchin. Look at this guy. I think yeah. he's a biologist. Oh <laughs> we're searching for urchins now. Yeah. <laughs> Look, he's lurching. Oh, he's <laughs> got That's what I was gonna That's say. That's a big one. Well, there was a cliff around here, you could be perching on it. Okay. <laughs> okay, moving on, it's fine. He's, hey, he's got a rhyming dictionary up here. <laughs> <laughs> he's I testing our patience. Yeah, like, look, look at the at things he has uh, on it, too. Oh, he's yeah. got a little oh, yeah, handbag. Handbag. Take it, yeah, handbag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great shot. Okay, how do you, uh, Just walking along. He might yeah. be selling them, in which case it would yeah. be a merchant. Oh, uh, yeah, I was waiting for that. <laughs> oh, you're popping these out too fast, because I'm in my head trying to find rhymes. You're, you're beating me merchant. too long. All right, thank you, Dave. <laughs> that was a good one, yeah. I had to get, I, you get really to three in a row, I had to do something. <laughs> well, I, I kept trying to get besearch in there, but... Besearch? <laughs> Besmirched. Yeah, besmirched. that's it. Besmirched. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It must be cold down there because this software keeps freezing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I think tomorrow is Sunday, so maybe heading off in church. In church. -in. He's churching. Church -in. Church. -in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I was thinking about merchandise, but that's too similar to merchant. Yeah. So. You have me going through the whole alphabet, adding yeah. urchin at the end. <laughs> it's funny, the name of the hemicordat uh, worm, uh -huh. Yoda. Oh, yeah, the Yoda. Yoda. Oh, it's the Yoda worm? Yeah. Nice. Like Star Wars? Yeah. <laughs> Big ears. Pagoda. <laughs> Common name is Akron. <laughs> we stopped rhyming, Rob. <laughs> 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 I mean, we can keep the rhymes going. <laughs> you say Pagoda? Pagoda. Diet soda. <laughs> Diet soda, nice. In the, in the chat, the someone buster. said, you the Rhyme Busters, you already have your watch name. Great job. <laughs> In the chat, someone said if you were to offer items for purchase that celebrate Echinderms, I'm, I pronounced that wrong, I'm sorry. You could be an urchin merchant. Urchin Ooh. merchant. How's that pronounced? E Echinoderms? Mm hmm. What does Echinoderm like, mean? It means. Uh, it's fine in the yeah. skin. I feel like it's kind of derm name. Oh, yeah. Ooh, what's, we, got we got a big thing. C Ooh. Is a C pad? Mm. What are you? Or is it an eel? Oh. It's an eel. Yeah. It's wiggly. Yeah. wiggly. Can you zoom please, Dave? S squiggly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Fish. Nice. Where's its head? It's pointy. It's bottom left, I believe. Wow. Yeah. What, it, what? What is this? Oh. Look at that noodle. Biology. 
It might be an eel. Science? It's spaghetti. Spaghetti. Yeah, you can see the uh, granularity of the sand behind it. Yeah, this Are those is tiny little eyes? This tail here. Yeah, to the left. To the bottom wow, left. this is... What's so we can <coughs> Can't get your tail, buddy. There it is. Little freckle spots, too. Very cute little animal. Look at the head. Here it's he got comes. like a derpy little face. This is cool. It's, yeah, its face is cool. Does it swim backwards? What am I seeing here? Okay. Yeah, that was cool. It, it, it has us bamboozled. I'm gonna get the in the cinema cam if I can. Uh, yeah. I think they're struggling with the cinema oh, cam. Yeah. Is, uh, shrimp count. Not giving us much at the moment. Roger, not much. Is that shrimp number Stereo three? Cams are happy. Shrimp number five. What? There's another Fall one to the right, too. Another shrimp? I thought I saw one. Mm. Shrimp, shrimp, shrimp. I think shrimp. the shrimp were herding the eel. They were H, H E R D. Herding. Herd. <laughs> not hurting. Reminds you of that song. Does anyone know what that eel was? Someone in the chat said snipe eel, sorcerer eel. Yes. Snipe eel or sorcerer eel, is that in there? Is that in the a list? real thing? It could be, but certainly looks similar to a snipe eel. <laughs> Maybe we're just snipe hunting. Also looks similar to a surf surreal. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. <laughs> but the coloration is closer to. The Actually, I think it's a sorcerer. But I am not sure. A I am eel? a vent microbiologist. <laughs> It's okay, I'm not sure either. I'm an illustrator. <laughs> Here we see, uh, coming up in Atalanta Mezzo, there's clearly something that's an Lumpy. obstacle. So as that approaches, uh, we just kind of want make sure that we're heading up and over it in case it's tall. I don't, you'll get a sense of what the gains are set for once you encounter it. It doesn't look like it's something we are gonna struggle with, but it's something to keep an eye on. If you check the the Herc Sea King, is that is that that? Yeah. So the range here is 20 meters, yeah. and on the port, uh, the left side one, which is Atlanta, it's each individual ring is 20 meters. So we're looking at okay. about 35 until we get there. Whereas this one will not see it yet. Looks good. So that's our our goal that I was just talking um, to Elias about is that we don't. Typically, while we're moving, we don't want there to be any terrain to enter that first 20 meter division ring. So we'll want Atalanta to, to be up above it. So we pull up. So right now we're good, but we'll keep an eye on it. If it's getting yeah. close, we'll start maybe even making a more extreme separation, a taller delta. Looks like an old Keeping uh, my delta sponge. around 20. Old yeah, that's great. That seems to be working pretty well. All right, thank you. We've had very minimal tether eye wax. And uh, I'm not getting tugged around too much. That's kind of the it's kind of the balance to strike. Those old sponges are kind of sad looking. I really want to see what that is. I don't think we're going to get there, though. It kind of started to disappear. Yeah. And it got so it might be we're just above it. I don't know. Maybe. It's a little off to the right. I don't know if I can probably get Herc over there. Why not? But see how it like disap you know? Yeah. What it's are like you? It's seeking out. But yeah. I think it's just this whole field here. Yeah, it's yeah I think it is. It's we've Big got rocky. some ripples here too. Oh, that's right. So that's usually an indicator of strong current. Is that right? Yeah, some current. I'm not sure how strong. Fair. But Look at this uh, big overhangy one off to the right. I, I like don't that. want to. <laughs> <laughs> looks like, oh, it looks like there's something underneath it over there, too. You care what you look at? All right. Yeah, let's look at that. I'll look at it now. <laughs> but it's, it's my of choice. My, yeah, it's my choice. Of my own volition, I'm Ooh, what's the purple thing? Uh, oh, another urchin. Oh, yeah, we have a, that one a purple been thing there. It's another sea urchin. Mm. Famous pieces that Elias collected when he was Then we got Disney. some kind of coral. And a shrimp dive bump it. I didn't see that shrimp. Add it to the tally. All right, I'll add it to tally the tally. Tally ho. Six shrimp. I 
at this like chunky, lumpy looking rock over here, this big one. Yeah, these are old blocks of basalt that have fallen down, I think. They don't look in place. Okay. Try and pick that one up. <laughs> now are these boulders? Yeah, these are boulders. Oh, there's another coral on the side. That's an old peduncle there, an old anchor. Mm -hmm. It actually has a face on it, there's the eye. Is peduncle a official term? Oh, it's an anchor. There's a peduncle, but that's the uh, sea pen. I, I misspoke it. Look at these ripples. Right. Guess what time it is. Yeah, Top Urchin of the hour searching? gauge check. That's for you. Gauge check. Gorge. Gorge. It's just a rock. Just. But there's an acorn worm to the right. Another one. Those are old news. <laughs> Pulling the delta depth up to 22 so I can gauge check. Sure. <laughs> hey, corn. <laughs> that was a good one. It's corn, eh? The hour is 2200. Pardon me? The hour is uh, 2200. Yes. Thank you. I'm gonna change my camera. Uh, camera to gauges. Sure. Oops. Ooh, yep. I, I don't know if I can read that. You can bring it down there. Uh, How do I do that? You do that by doing PIP H11, the red button. Uh, the one that says PIP H11. Uh, this one. Yep. And then you will hit uh, source ROV, the orange one on the right. I can put it back this one? where it was. And then once you got that, you're going to do Herc Brow. And the very easy way to do that is to ask Dave to do it. <laughs> Oh, but uh, thank you. I just wanted to show you how to do it once. So awesome. now you've got it there. 
Okay. All right, I should get moving now. Thank you, Rennie. Have a good night. There, I just, I put it back for you. Thank you. Since uh, cinema cam was. <coughs> Do you have that fourth else. salvo set up now, Dave? No. Okay. We'll want that cinema cam back up once gauge checks are done. Hopefully it'll be working at least sometimes. Yep, I have a manual method for doing that. A salvo method for doing it will be when we're not in the water and I have time to do it. Wonderful. And when you've had enough sleep to do other stuff. Yeah, so a week from now. Yeah, roger that. <laughs> Camera to crack? Yeah, you can just go do it. When you're doing gauge checks, just go for it. Okay. And then uh, when you're done, you can put it back on porch. <clears throat> Big hit. What do we got there? Oh boy. That's bad. Go look at this. This could be fun. All these pock marks there. Interesting. As soon as you've done that, please put it back to front porch. Front porch? Thank you. Yeah, so for gauges, as soon as say, hey, I'd like to do gauges. Like, yeah, go ahead, take the camera. You can go through the gauges. You can go through craft. And as soon as you've taken the craft reading, just throw it back on the porch. Okay. Thank you. I'll remember to put it on the porch again. I forget it all the time when I'm sitting there. So. Okay. Like, and then I put it on uh, cinema camera. Again. Thank you. Cinema cam is still not showing us uh, very much interesting working on that one. Thank you, Jim. Well, I'll find something Can you come up on else. Delta, please? Oh. <coughs> Coming up on Delta? It's one of the hardest parts about this role is watching everything while you do any one given task. It's mm -hmm. like, it's a lot. It's really hard to keep tabs on everything. Meanwhile, the back on. row is just playing a big seek and find game. <laughs> That's why we're here. To seek and to find. All right, yes, pulling Delta Depth back up to 22. Thank you. Delta Depth is at 22. Uh, and immediately starts going down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, describing my display? Yeah, sure. And just to give everyone at home a refresher, um, we are 2,400 meters down at an unnamed guillot. We've actually come up 100 meters already. Oh, we came up 100 meters. That was wrong. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, this is... Um, EV Nautilus in purple, and um, let me zoom out a bit so that we can see the two allobies. So we have um, Atlanta, like forward here, uh, just uh, midship, like towards the, um, the ports of, uh, of um, Nautilus. Then behind um, Atlanta, we have um, Aquilis, and um, currently we are just tracking the line going to our next waypoint and um, you know exploring as we go yep. so moving at um, point two knots 
And that's that's it. Yeah. Can, can you zoom out and show the general path we're gonna take? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Sure. Can do that. Okay. Resetting max tension. Sounds good. Can you zoom in on this one, please, Dave? And gauge check finish. Yes. Yeah, so here, the WP2. That's our next three point, and that's where we are heading. And um, afterwards, let yeah, me see yeah. if I can see. Then afterwards, we come a bit um, south to three point three, and then the exploration continues Ooh. like that. So we have um, seven waypoints in total, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you. Come yeah. wide. Keep keep coming wide if you want. Show them where we're gonna end up. Okay. Yeah, sure. So then with uh, we point four, just them um, the south of we point three. Then we go west to we point five. Then more west again, we point six. And um, this is going to be our final destination. So let me kind of zoom everything so that we can have a, an overview of everything. So this is where we are currently. The purple, then we are coming to waypoint seven. Yeah. So it looks like by the end of our watch, we should be at waypoint two, so. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And this welcome. map is in the quad view for people looking. So what? Oh, I was just I was just telling the people watching online that they could see the map that you were just talking about. Oh, okay, yeah. It's on satellite feed three, stream three. There you go, stream three. Oh yeah, the people yes. at home. Um. Yes, several. Hmm? Shrimp. How many shrimp uh, are we at? Shrimp, we're at seven. Ooh, shrimp count, shrimp count. There's a great video online of a shrimp running on a treadmill to the Benny Hill song. So <laughs> it made me fall in love with shrimp. Are you zoomed on mini zoo, Steve? Yeah, I just thought I would just to see the, okay. what that looked like. That's, I, I like the zoom. I would appreciate a heads up, but I'm definitely in favor of the zoom. Okay. I thought I was getting close all of a sudden. No, no, Panic. No, no. Panic set in. My fault. But yeah, I like the zoom. Last leg I was on, we were zooming all the time, and we yeah, were totally. staying really tight. Uh, we're trying to get more hero shots of, uh, of Herc. I'm uh, definitely in favor of that. I shouldn't spring it on you. Yeah, I was just used to doing it. We were, also, we were also letting the Atalanta pilots do their own zooming. Oh, yeah? With yeah. the box over there? No, just reach over and, and, oh, yeah, uh, right on. and do the zoom. So we can ease our way into that as we uh, Yeah, as, as the go. cruise goes on. Sounds good. Yep. You can keep it zoomed in if you want. That's fine by me. I just wanted to see, uh, see how things looked. So we're at an unnamed guillot. Um, do these ever get named? And if they do, who names them? How do they name them? Great question. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, historically, I think it's uh, oftentimes the people who mapped them first kind of had uh, dips on what they call it. And then they had to uh, oftentimes go through a, uh, a certification by Jebco for, uh, to assert the names and to, to be uh, recognized. But now uh, uh, it's, it's kind of difficult because in the monument areas, we're trying to be respectful of uh, the Hawaiian Pacific Islanders and allow them to have some sort of a name. So we're kind of trying to decide how to name these things. And unfortunately, a lot of the times what we're saying now, we're calling it unnamed Gio one, two, or three. But there's another recent or a paper about 10 years ago that looked at satellite altimetry and identified all these from satellite altimetry and gave them really KW-11443 identifiers, not names, but at least identified them. So it's uh, the naming is always a bit of a, a contention on how you do these sorts of things. You don't want to offend anyone. You don't want to overstep your bounds and just be respectful of, uh, of the region. I know that's kind of a, a real loose description of these things, but uh, it ha does have to go through a process and usually to get 
okayed by Jebco. What's what's Jebco? I don't know the name, it, but it's uh, the, like the governing body of naming things in the ocean. It's oh. um, it's general bathymetric chart of the ocean. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Jebco with a with a G. Ah, cool. And I'm assuming like most of the seamounts around here are unnamed. Exactly, most of them are unnamed. I still remember a cruise a while ago. He was a, a pretty new chief scientist. We went over, mapped one of the uh, sea mounts, and he goes, oh, can I name it? I said, yeah, that, but what are you going to name the 10,000 other ones? <laughs> <laughs> Delta depth to 23. Sure, seems fine. Okay. This is a nice happy lazy loops on the tether. The extreme of being too high means when there's a heave, ship heave up, mm -hmm. that goes really tight. It wiggles around Hercules. Oh. Um, and go ahead and zoom in please, Dave. Zoom in that little black critter. Tadpole. Yeah. A tadpole? <laughs> Fish. Is it a baby? That's a tough one. It's very cute. It's very cute, yeah. No. Oh. Alright, I'm a little so bouncy. Thank you. Ten centimeters long. Mm. It's pretty wee, yeah. Little yeah, fella. Anyway, that's kind of what we were looking for, is making sure it's nice and happy and then not all up in Atalanta's business, but not pulling Herc around and okay. too much excess force. So, yeah. And so, Trevor, for any of the new viewers, you want to explain what the uh, green dots are? Yeah. Green dots are our pew pews, our lasers. Those are two parallel laser beams mounted to the top of the main Zeus Plus camera that are 10 centimeters apart. They help me because I can figure out how far away stuff is, get some sense of perspective, and they help scientists because they can look at a rock or a bit of biology, etc., and have some scale and understand how big it is. Very cute. Yes, when Rob said 10 centimeters, I was wondering, like, in my head, like, how did he figure that out? But I guess he, he used this. Exactly, yeah. exactly. When we go in for those zooms, I try to, we call it painting the object the, or the fish or whatever with the lasers, try to paint it with the lasers so that with when both lasers are on the fish, you get the proper scale. Right. And, of course, it looks like they're in the shape of a V, just like the classic standing on railroad tracks and having them almost meet in the horizon. Mm. <laughs> That's cool. Could that little eel have been a cusk eel? Yeah, I'm not sure. Do you have an idea? Paula, was that a cusk eel, that small one we just saw? Yeah, no. I think it's a uh, juvenile. A juvenile? I'm going to try something here. What if I do this? This is going to change it a lot, I think. No. What did you do? What did I do? <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> I made it worse, I made it wet, not as good. What if you just worked? Yeah. That'd be great. It's never that easy. It isn't. Yeah, I don't, don't know why. You had me turn it down to medium at the beginning? Do we want to, like, 
change that again, or? You could. That's just the speed. It's oh, not, uh, okay. Oops, I floated up. I'm going to go back down now. And back here. Oh, that's better. I didn't go down low enough before. Eh. Eh. Ooh. That's pretty good. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not as good as it has been historically. Someone in the chat said that there's 66 species of cuskeels. There's at least one. <laughs> So, pilots, we hear you talking about delta every so often. I know that that's the difference in height between Herc and Argus or Atalanta. Is there a optimal height that you're trying to keep it at? Yeah, I can answer it. Um, so, between, Ar between Atalanta and Herc, there is that yellow tether. And we want to make sure that well, Atalanta is weighted, so she actually moves up and down as the ship bobs in the waves. And we want to make sure that Herc isn't doing that. So we need to have some slack on the tether. But we also don't want to have too much slack on the tether, because otherwise it could get in our way. So having a good delta depth is one where there's tether nicely laid out between the two ROVs, but none of the bouncing up and down being transferred or tugged onto Herc. Is that a good answer? That's a great answer. Thank you. Fantastic answer. Could you, all, could you guys also explain what the relationship is between Herc and Atalanta? Uh, on, and on again, off again. Ex-lovers? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, before someone was saying brother and sister, but... Oh! <laughs> hmm. Yeah, like, how do they, how do they talk to each other and you know, what's the benefit of the, both of them being in the water? I can't, I can't, there's gotta be a joke there. I can't think of a joke. Uh, <laughs> what's the benefit to having them both? Well, we can't dive Hercules without Atalanta. We can dive Atalanta without Hercules, but Hercules needs to be connected to a sled ROV. So Argus or Atalanta in order to function. Let's go up this cliff. And, and why is that? The tether's only 30 meters. Uh, I see. Limit us to very short dives. The cliff! Here we go! The cliff! And what's Atlanta Delta? Like, what's the length? The length of Atlanta? Yeah. The, the, the Delta, like the... The difference, like the, the tether length is yeah. uh, 30 meters. Or what do you mean? Yeah, for, no, I mean, uh, maybe I would say the winch, like, you know, how long can we go into the water? Like oh, what? yeah. Well, we're actually limited by Herc's depth rating of 4,000 meters. Oh, I the, see. The cable on the winch is 7,000 meters, but we can't use it all with Hercules attached because it will, it'll yeah. crush. Isn't that what we have for mini Herc? Yeah, little Herc's depth rating is 6,000 meters. So we have 6,000 meters of cable plus 1,000 meters of spare on the winch, so we can do deep dives with Little Hercules and Atalanta. Nice. Th thanks for that. Yeah. Yeah, these, these rocks almost look like they're in place, so they're not stuff that's fallen down the slope. I think this is actual uh, erupted volcanic rocks. Yeah. Kind of flowy. Yeah. Can avalanches happen under the sea? Yeah, all the time. All sorts of landslides. I mean, most of the stuff that we've been going over before was probably part of a landslide or rocks falling down the slope. 
hello to our viewer in Vancouver. Um, yes, those are new cameras uh, that we have at the bottom of the, the Hercule Hercules view. Burr? Yeah. Uh, video, how do I feel about turning off some of the Atalanta lights? Yeah, I was thinking about that uh, because it does light up all, you know, depends on the turbidity of the water, so it's lighting up a lot of stuff in the water. But yeah, which, go ahead and turn some off and let's see how it looks. Which ones do you recommend I turn off? I don't know. Neither Ooh. do I. Okay, time to mess with it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, nice. That looks That's a much nice better. shot. Beautiful. Ooh. Yeah, that looks yeah much we better. like that. Best of all worlds because we can still see the tether. So. Oh, too yeah. dark. There you go. There we go. Okay. Nice. Cool. Lovely. Hey, Tim, is uh, uh, Cinema Cam ready for prime time again? It is for now. I'm seeing how long it stays that oh, way, but you are okay. welcome to bring it up. All right. So, talking about the new cameras that are on the front porch there, that's the uh, center one. Uh, it's a high resolution camera. How, what, what is the resolution of the cinema cam? I knew you would ask, and I don't know. Hi. <laughs> I believe it goes up to 6K if one wanted it to. Wow. wow. Does it have any optical zoom capabilities? It does a bit, um, not nearly as much as the Herc Zeus, um, but currently the zoom controller is not talking to me, so this is where we at. Understood. We are right there. So did you get a chance to look at the sonar when we were coming up to that micro cliff? Yeah. Yeah, did you see how the it was obviously brighter than just the blue, turned into yellow and stuff, but also that it was thin. Mm -hmm. That's the, uh, in this case it's not super scary, but the thinner the line and the harder the target, the scarier it is. If we see yellow all the way, it means it's seeing 20, 40, 60, 80 meters ahead of us. But if it can only see something 35 meters ahead, that's a straight wall. It can't see behind it. Exactly. It's just bouncing directly exactly. off the surface. Yeah. Okay. So we're not just looking at the hardness of the return, but also the thinness of it. Well, it looks like the Seamount does get some decent uh, currents here with all these ripples. Yeah. Are you able to, not measure, but uh, understand what the currents are doing based on the size of these ripples or the direction or anything like that? Yeah, you can tell by the size and the shape. Uh, Got another shrimp. Kind of tell the direction it, it's going. Because there are some uh, flow rates that kind of associate with this, but it's also related a little bit to the uh, size of the particles, too. So you kind of have the to sand that range. Okay, cool. I got that shrimp down. How are you feeling about the delta? It's uh, on the high end, but it's fine. Okay. See, that looks fine, and then when we do the heave, it gets... It gets a little tight. ...really close to being too tight, but not quite too okay. tight. So, you can leave it there. We're coming up slope. Got, got mm -hmm. a but, uh, biology over here. Ooh, some biology. have a gander at some biology. Okay, Dave, go ahead and zoom, please. This, uh Black coral, batipatis, something like that. Cool. Is there any way to know about how old that is? You have to see the um, concentric Yeah, like tree rings? Great view on the cinema cam. Yeah, it's weird being so low to the dirt. <laughs> I feel like a mouse. 
the seamount. All right, thank you, Dave. Come by, please. Someone mentioned the aging of corals by their rings. If you cut them open, I guess you can see how many rings there are. Does one ring correspond to one year? Or is it more nuanced than that? I think so. But um, I guess for deep, deep sea water corals is difficult. It's much easier to, yes, so too. to guess the, <laughs> the age from shallow water corals. Keeping the delta back around 20. Sure. Good hit there. What do we got? 10,800 pounds? 10,875. Yeah. Oh. It's interesting to me that the patterns that the, the rocks sticking out of the sediment make this one's just a line. Yeah, I agree. I'm following it. This isn't even the way I'm supposed to be going. <laughs> but it's, it's, it really uh, sucked you in, and it's like absolutely. hypnotizing you. It's yeah. not even yellow. <laughs> Follow the yellow brick manganese crusted rocks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think this is probably a sheet flow that uh, part of it mass wasted away and kind of fell away like a sheet. So that's kind of a, can you see how it looks like a, a layer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's probably a sheet flow that came on top of that. And the stuff off to the right has kind of uh, slid down the hill. So are we facing the We're facing the upslope slope right now. Yeah. yeah. A lot of things almost have like a ropey or tubey texture. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like the uh, lava tubes yeah. kind of coming out, shooting down. And you see the, the bumpy texture on top of it is the, uh, the grape-like texture that's characteristic of manganese incrustation. Is it grape-like? Yeah, that's botryoidal, which is stands for, you know, a group of grapes. Oh. Really? Yeah. That's a Greek tra translation. Wow. Not as edible. Is Panos though. here? No. <laughs> botryoidal? Yeah, botryoidal. Botryoidal. Grape-like. A bunch of grape-like. bunch of grapes, yeah. Add that to the vocab list. Can you use that in other non-geological contexts? Yeah. Huh. Cool. So if we had grapes at lunch, we could say they were boitriodal? Yeah, if they were a group of them or a bunch. I'd even say a blackberry is boitriodal. Yeah. Is that a thing down there? Oh, oh yeah, it is. Let's look at the biology piece. A purple. A purple biology. Thank you. Oh, purple. that's good. Yeah, can you zoom in on this biology, please? Oh no, that's one of those uh, other thingies. Oh yeah, the thingy. Oh, this is um, um, blind lobster. Yeah, that's it's okay. A blind lobster. Lobster. Yeah. Not they the kind we live eat. There. Burrows. Yeah, cute. Okay, thank you, Dave. They look so prehistoric. They do, yeah. Is he kind of buried in the sand a little bit? Yeah, they sometimes live in barrows or oh. like, yeah, buried in the sand. Re remind me of the old Eurypterids. <laughs> little lobster caves.
So were these all from lava flowing down? Yep. So I've I've stood on like land volcanoes and lava fields. If if this was out of water, would it be very similar to like and I was in Oregon and, and Iceland standing on lava fields. So would it be similar to stuff like that? It it it's sub level, yeah. But uh, these are underwater. Yeah. So you get more of these pillow basalts mm -hmm. and more rapid cooling. Where on land it uh it's not an ash flow. It could be okay. a large flow. It's usually thicker. That's why you often see more of the... Uh, All right. Uh, oh, boy. You can get lava tubes as well. Uh, underwater, you get lava tubes. Yep. Well, you get lava tubes underwater, too, but... What else was there? Uh, yeah, land, you're going to get... Typically, you can get more, more of the columnar basalts. Surprised we haven't seen any of the nuggets, but maybe just be too much sediment here. How deep? Ooh, there's do you another think? fish over here. Hmm. Let's go have a look. I was gonna say, how deep do you think the sediment goes? Well, when we were coming in, I saw them at least 20 meters thick. So, I mean, it's it's gonna be patchy on the steeper slope. But it's probably a meter at least or so. There's another one of those super thin ones. Yeah. Oh, there he goes. Uh, can you zoom if you can? Yeah, I'll try and chase this little fella around. No, that, that's the uh, lizardy. Oh. That one looks a little different from the one before. I'm going entirely the wrong way now. <laughs> He's chasing it around. Oh, the delta. Is that the lizard fish type? I'm gonna turn on down light. Ooh. Face. Oh. Good job. All right. Uh. Yeah, halosaur. That's what I was thinking. Halosaur. Yeah, I like that. All right, I gotta catch up. Oh. That was irresponsible. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it too. I don't think the eel liked it. No, probably not. Well, some nice angular rocks there. Way too big. There you are. Back in our regular operating configuration. More acorn worms. Yeah, what if the uh, acorn worms tend to come out at night like night crawlers? How do they know? I was just about to ask that. They're Only after out. it rains. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any, like, night and day to these guys? No, because it's all dark. <laughs> Their sleep schedules must be whacked. That is a really good question. I've, I've heard the answer before, but I can't remember it, about the circadian rhythms of animals and how deep that extends to. I know there's lots of mass migration from day to night from, like, down to, what, 400 meters? Or how does he, deep does it go? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Well, I mean, they have shown, you know, vertical migrations of zooplankton and, and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even with a, a, when a cloud passes over, they see them come up because it's a little darker. Wow. Wasn't there something really cool about, like, a big vertical migration change during a solar eclipse? 
cool. I can believe that. Wow. Do these fish sleep? Yeah. They have to sleep, right? Can you zoom in on this fishy fish thing? Non-fish. Another one? Squishy. Oh. Tunicate. Lime lobster again? Anemone over there. Tunicate, I oh, think. No. Anemone? Ooh. I think this is a sea cucumber. Yeah. Look at his feet. Oh, things. yeah. Oh. Yeah, I like it. Sea cucumber. Wild. <laughs> okay, thank you. And there's an anemone, too, yeah. Ooh, it's this little white thing. You can zoom in again, Dave. I'm going to go with the bottom right one first, and then I'll go to the top left one after. Is it the black yeah. one? Black one. Black coral. Hmm. It's amazing, just one little outcrop of rock like that, they find a way to attach. Yeah, funny. You can stay in, Dave. I'm going to go up to the anemone. Why is it named black coral if its coloration isn't black? Uh, it's because the um, skeleton is made by a um, black protein, kitchen, so that's why it's called black coral. All right, thank you. Very cool. Yeah. Isn't the stalk of it kind of black in color, like the, like the bottom part of it kind of black looking? Yeah, sometimes you can find jewelry, like pendants and stuff like that made of this. This is cute. <laughs> I like your position. <laughs> also, to answer your question, Trevor, that happened five minutes ago. <laughs> no, I don't remember what I asked. <laughs> The migration of zooplankton, it's mm. usually limited to the upper 1,000 meters, but Thousand. scientists have cool. found it extending as deep as 1,200 to 1,300. Wow. And that's for like day and night? Yep, the dial vertical migration. Can we zoom in on this white patch? Am I seeing something here? Or what, are you in the middle there? Yeah, what am I seeing there? It looks like a white patch. Yeah, I think we can confirm that's a white patch. Scientific discovery. Confirmed white patch. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you never know. Sometimes they're gems. Uh, fun fact from the, the chat, um, black coral is the state gem of Hawaii. Really? State gem? State gem. I did look it up. It does say it represents the state gemstone. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, another. Another one? Another one there, yeah. Ooh, it's what's more this over here? here. Ooh. Yeah, this. Haven't seen one of those It's yet. all sorts of targets. Target. Is that a glass sponge? Yeah. A live one? Well, yeah, there's this. Looks live, yeah. A little thingy Can on top. Can we zoom in on the laser -y thing first, please? Another black coral, maybe? Is yeah, that? Yes. I'm going to do the no no thing and tilt the camera while I'm zoomed in. Oh, that's pretty smooth, actually. So why is this one stuck so long in comparison to the other one? You can come half out, Dave. And I was wondering that, too. There doesn't seem like there's any pre this. predation on it or anything like that. Yeah. Get sponge here. You can go in again. Wow. I found it. Does, does he have a buddy inside? I don't know. We'll find out. Sponge buddy. Yeah. Sponge. Buddy. Sponge. Uh, I don't see him. Ugh. Nobody. Nobody home? Nobody. Oh, no. There's the other cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Censored. <laughs> don't look inside this house. We didn't have a, um, a warrant. Oh, bummer. Yeah, these cameras are really neat and take great imagery, but they do interfere with the main imaging camera. But that's okay. We have 
sometimes uh, you have to find ways to make multiple goals be achieved with the same dives. And we're just to testing solve them this out, problem, right? I think we should just add more cameras. <laughs> add more cameras forever. We are testing them out, but we're also hoping to get as much imagery from these dives as possible. So where are they going to be? Where's their permanent home? Where are they going to be placed? Ooh, that depends who you ask and when you ask them. Oh. They're communal. They are nice and low though, so you can get some views underneath these places. Yeah, and for viewers at home, it's on cam three. For a satellite cam three. It is a acorn worm. Yes. Look at that cinema they cam. They are this very abundant. Cool. What's underneath the shelf? Nobody knows. Rocks. Yeah, probably more rocks. It's where we store our rocks. <laughs> rock storage. That's a special shelf. It's <laughs> a special shelf where we store our rocks. It does look really, really fascinating with the camera being so low. Is that what it would look like if you were a fish? A fish with lights. Ooh. Is that an old dead sponge there? It looks like it, yeah. You want to zoom on it or? Yeah, I just zoom, just zoom. Okay, let me reverse. Okay, Dave, go ahead. What's that floating thing on the top left of the screen right now? No, it's like Jelly? Yeah. That might be interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go for it, Dave. Good whatever job. you got. I'll try my best here. Oh, that's cool. No. Hey, it's gone. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is again. Downlight coming on. I haven't seen one like that before. It's better and worse. I got a sec. I'm going to play with lighting a bit and just mess everybody up. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Is it's a different color now? Am I wrong? Like it's like all shiny on the inside. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, cuz it had like cool. dark stripes before and now it has that glowy looking. I turned a light on. Wee. Good job turning a light on. Oh. Ooh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Bye, buddy. Oh, uh, hey again. It's back. <laughs> All right, turn the lights on. What's the highlight level on that one, Maranke? I'll give that one a three out of yeah, five. I like that. <laughs> that feels Cute like a three jelly. out of five, yeah. Down light coming off. So the, the video images we're getting, um, are they going to later be reviewed for people to like try to identify what we're seeing if we don't get an ID on it? They're there to do that, and I have done that for, for some things geological. But that's one of the things we're really trying to do is to find a way to identify automatically through machine learning of some sort. Mm -hmm. Uh, identify some, some creatures and also identify sections of interest to later look at again. So it's something they're working on now. A nice little lava piece here. Yeah. That's a good question for the science row. Are we going to stop at waypoint two or just keep cruising on to waypoint three do we just kind of swing by it and head on there's keep, no there's, there's just general paths just kind of 
head so toward it. If you have a cut early or whatever you want to do, you just kind of... Yeah, right. so you can call the next move in towards waypoint three right now if you'd like. Well, no, let's just keep going to waypoint two. Uh, yeah, we're we're moments away from waypoint two. Oh, okay, that sounds good. And we're uh, moments away from the end of the ship move. Yeah, okay. We might need to call in one more ship step in order to make it to waypoint two. Is waypoint three directly past it, or is it a new trajectory, a new bearing? Oh, it's icy. Okay, well then, if we have to do one more step, then definitely... Shrimp? Shrimp? Yeah, shrimp count. It looks like they're almost done their track line, so... What's our shrimp check? How many... Okay. You can ask them for one more right now. Uh, that way they keep their momentum up. Nine shrimp. Ooh. Cool little... <coughs> Looks like one of your paths there, Trevor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That worm had some prime real estate. It was like in the middle of a rock circle. And then when we're at waypoint two, we're gonna call it different moves at the plan. Sounds good. Thank you. Does anyone know if anything eats those acorn worms? Mm, sand sediment. I think they process the sediment and filter well, it well, in. What preys on them, if anything preys on the worms oh, themselves? Oh, I, I don't know. Squirrelfish? Squirrelfish. <laughs> <laughs> Sharks. I feel like they wouldn't be very tasty. They're all full of sand. It's like eating an earthworm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't knock it till you try uh, it. Well, they're eating the sand, so they must find the there. sand tasty. Other things might too. All right, Dave, go ahead there, please. That's a different one. Oh. Is it a coral? What's the blue thing oh. at the bottom? A little associate there, too. Is that a hydroid of some sort, or? I don't know. All right, thank you, Dave. Oh, it's swimming. You can see in the stereo cam. The blue thing? Yeah. Oh, there, right, it, there goes. it goes. Oh, wow. That's a cool camera. So low to the dirt, it's so weird. It's really cool. It, it seems like fake, it seems unreal. Yeah. Oh, this is first one we saw was bathopathies. Something to keep an eye out for if the opportunity presents itself. Uh, one of yeah. mm -hmm. 
my goals is to collect some calibration data for this camera between the three, the positioning of the three cameras on the porch, so that would involve finding a somewhat vertical object and holding the ROV in front of it and moving laterally so it touches all four corners of the screen, more or less. Okay. Um, nothing here looks like a good chance for that, but anytime you see an object and we're not in the middle of a fast move, then it would be lovely. Okay, well, we are kind of continuing on, not fast, but continuous moves for this uh, this part of the dive. So if it will take longer than, say, three minutes, then I think we would have to plan ahead a little bit. Um, which is fine, that's fine, but we have not seen very many vertical stuff, so that might be a later in the dive kind of routine. I don't know how yep. late you're planning to stay up. I can be here till whenever. Whenever is a long time away. <laughs> Could that uh, last core we saw have been a C pen? No, I don't think so. Um, one of the scientists in the science portal said is a therop theropathist. Was that it? But we're at two, two, three, nine. Now it's at two, two, eight, two. I don't know if we climb that high. You texting while driving? No. <laughs> Question from the chat: Why are they called acorn worms? Where'd the acorn come from? It's because together with its collar, it resembles an acorn, so it's the shape of it. It's that triangular looking thing at the tips of them, right? Mm -hmm. it's, dis it's the distinctive shape of the front end, kind of shaped like an acorn. Another Would shrimp? Shrimp, shrimp count. And that would be their head, right? What's this big flat rectangle? He's a, a big rock. Yeah, okay. Cool. Just busted off sheet flow or something? Yeah, that's what these are. Right on. See, it comes out so fast on top, and it's still flowing underneath. So it has like a shell. Oh, okay. Interesting. It's another uh, echinoderm. Yeah. Another Mice. shrimp. My shrimp. Yeah. Another. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of echinoderms here. This is another one there, another one there. It's those same types, too. Were these the ones we saw in the beginning? No, they look, it's they look well, a little bigger. I think that one's no. I think these are well. They. I wonder if those are like juveniles or smaller versions. I don't know.
did you know that humans share about 70% of their genome with acorn worms? You wow. do now. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to make of that. Would you consider that a fun fact? <laughs> <laughs> or, or a sad fact? <laughs> Got another shrimp here. Another shrimp? Shrimp count. We're at 12. There was one when you guys were talking. Apparently we share fifty percent of our genome with bananas, so <laughs> 50, I've heard of that one, yeah. seventy acorn worm, not that far off. I feel that some days, you know. <laughs> Existential fact. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least bananas and acorn worms are both kind of like long and tuby, but we're not. <laughs> That's the 50% part. <laughs> so how much um, does a, an acorn worm and a banana share? Let's find out. That's the important question. They're like basically the same organism. <laughs> Which means acorn worms could be tasty. Is there some website where you can put in two organisms and it tells you how much of a genome they share? We should make that a startup. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like yeah. that would be neat for about four minutes. <laughs> yeah, and then you'd uh, get bored of it. But then, like, you know, a little while later, it'd be neat again for another four minutes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's at least eight minutes of entertainment. I was over it after the banana statistics. <laughs> <laughs> Four we minutes ago. No, we can't compare an acorn worm and a banana. That's oh. sad. <laughs> Humans are the central node. Is that because there's no readily available information or because they share no genome? I would say no readily available information. Okay. Can we zoom in on this flat flapper, please? Technical term. Did you say flap flapper? Flat flapper. Flat flapper. Is that a halosaur again? It's a halosaur. Oh. He's backing up. Beep, beep, beep. Where are you going? All right, bye bye. I might do that little cinema cam action for him. Fun. It's a star on the cinema. There he goes. <coughs> See, you don't need zoom, just get real close. <laughs> yeah, Until they the, swim away. It's the going maneuver right now. What's this little cross action? Can we zoom in, Ooh. please? Is that a crinoid? Yay. Looks That's like it. First. first crinoid of the dive. Unstocked. Cool creatures. Hmm. Alien stuff. Thank you. Beautiful. A squat oh, oh, lobster! Oh, oh, oh. oh, there it is. Oh. Are we sampling this? I was just thinking in my head, no squat Do lobsters yet. Squat lobster! Do you want it? Are we sampling? Yeah. Can you want it? wide, please? Can? Lobster That's time. Cool. You're in charge. Squat lobster. Oh boy, this is going to be tough. If it's possible. Hold the position, please. Hold the position. You guys can do it. We believe in lobster. Can I get the bubble on the craft cam? Bubble craft on the craft cam? Gotcha. 
or good do eye. I got you? It's best to grab them behind no, the head, otherwise the pictures get you. <laughs> I've already lost where it is, but. <laughs> okay, we got the craft. Thank you. That fish is gonna watch in horror as we suck up this squat lobster. <laughs> Science Row, can you point out where it is again, please? <laughs> was it underneath there? Can you point to where it was? Yeah. Is it underneath Just there? to the right of the lasers in that little uh, crevice there. Oh, yeah, right rectangular there. Oh. crevice. Oh, get on the oh, thingy up there too. Oh. Did he hide? I think it just crawled underneath a yeah. little. I see his claws right now. Sorry, one more time. Go. Tell us the other. Thank you. Got it. Can you change uh, hotel page? Can you grab uh, the cameras sub page and turn on bucket cam and off the other one that shares bucket cam circuit? Thank you. Rail cam? Can you go to Herc Hydraulics page and do the suction jar rotate until we're lined up with jar one. Sample jar forward? Yes. Oh yeah. Maybe try reverse. Suck master Dave, 4, uh, Dave you can zoom in. Mm, oh, there we go. And keep going until we're aligned with one. Good there, Dave. Maybe out a little bit, actually. Sorry. Good there. And then, can you turn Tiny. on the suction pump? That's the blue buttons at the bottom. Can you set the suction one? I think that's the bottom left. Up to 30%. Please, and thank you. Current value 10, current value 20, and current value 30. Okay. I'm going to make Atalanta look back at Herc. Uh, you can look straight down with the camera. Okay. Come out a little bit, please, Dave. How am I doing this? What's happening here? Let's try this. Ugh, I don't like that. Okay, let's try 50%, actually. Change my mind. Okay. Up to 50? Yeah. Oh, not yet. Come on, you little rascal. Oh, sticky little rascal. You want more suction? Mm, not yet. Not farther. Uh, we got 0.7 wraps. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Come on, you little rascal. There <laughs> we go, got him. Let's see. Hello. Thank you. Not, not in the jar yet. Yeah, I don't see him yet. Come full wide, please, Dave. And someone watch that jar cam, see if we can see him there. I don't see him yet. It takes a while. Yeah. Confirming that that's jar number one. Confirmed. Thank you. Okay, you can uh, turn off the suction on the hydraulic hose, please, and come up on Delta. Uh, can I zero it? Zero, yes. Okay. All right, coming up on Delta. See if the squat lobster falls. There's going to be a lot of Ooh. sandy bits. <laughs> we'll never it's know. Like a snow globe. All right, let's rotate the sample jar the opposite way that you.